Hello students of science. In this video we're going to talk about the kinetic molecular theory and talk about how it relates to gases. The kinetic molecular theory is based on the idea that particles are always in motion. There's pretty much nothing as a particle that's not moving unless we're talking about absolute zero, but we won't get into that. Particles always in motion. When you understand this idea, it explains properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the energy of the particles and the forces between them. We can understand so much about just the different states of matter by thinking of it as particles are always in motion and some of these assumptions that the theory will make. So the kinetic molecular theory makes a few assumptions, so we're going to go over those. Number one, gases are made out of a large number of very tiny particles that are spread very far apart. This picture here doesn't really give you a good sense for how far apart those particles are, but in reality, they're very far apart. What it does tell you is that there is a large number of them, and they are moving around quite a bit. Secondly, gas particle collisions are elastic. This means that when one comes in contact with the other, all of the kinetic energy is going to be transferred. Nothing is really going to be lost to heat or something else. Fin of it is an elastic collision is where they come in contact and one leaves with all the energy of the other. And any elastic collision would be like two bean bags hitting each other. You know, they're not going to be bouncing off. An elastic collision, like we have with our gas particles, one completely bounces off, all the kinetic energy is maintained. Number three, gas particles are in continuous random motion. They're always moving. That direction is pretty much random inside the container that they are in. Four, there are no forces of attraction between the gas particles. Where you see them all moving around here, they're not clumping together. They're not sticking together. They are not attracted to one another. That is key because that explains a lot of their behavior. If they clumped, that would make things different. And finally, the temperature of the gas depends upon the average kinetic energy of the gas particles. Here we have them moving at low temperature. Here we have them moving at high temperature. They're still moving in both of them. Remember, continuous motion. However, at higher temperature, they are going to be moving faster. Some of the physical properties of gases. Number one, expansion. Gases do not have any shape or volume, or you might say they have indefinite shape or volume. When you release a gas in a container, it is going to expand and fill up the container regardless of the size, regardless of the shape. So they take on any shape, they take on any volume. Gases will completely fill any container they are in, and they will take its shape. Number two, fluidity. Gas particles can easily glide past each other, making them flow like liquids. So we can see right here, this is almost flowing like a liquid. Gas particles are going to do the same thing. They're not really going to be sticking with each other. They flow past each other. Three, low density. Particles are very far apart in gases, and gas can have about a thousandth of the density of a compound in either its liquid or its solid state. Very, very low density compared to the other two. This also means that they have very high compressibility. Because those particles are so far apart, gas particles can actually be compressed very tightly together, and that has some very profound implications that we'll talk about later. And finally, diffusion and effusion. Gases will spread out and mix with each other. This is why if someone comes in the room wearing very stinky perfume or cologne, that gas from there is going to spread out and mix with the air inside the room, even without stirring it. That's diffusion. And gas particles can pass through a tiny opening. This is called effusion. The smaller the particle, the faster the effusion. Larger particles obviously are going to effuse a little bit slower in comparison, but gases still do this much faster than either liquids do, and definitely more than solids do. Finally, real gases. All gases are going to deviate from these assumptions that we made, especially at high pressures and low temperature, though they hold true for most gases. So at high pressures, things start acting a little bit differently. Change the pressure, change the volume, things are going to be a little bit different. Nonpolar gases with no attraction are going to behave the most ideal. The less those particles stick to each other, and to a certain extent they do a little bit, but the less they do, the more it's going to behave like an ideal gas and less like a real gas. So here we have at high temperatures, low pressure, everything's normal, everything makes sense. Low temperature, high pressure, things get a little bit different, they deviate a little bit from our rules.